What's up guys, I'm Mahi and today we'll learn how you can read, predict and even control your opponent's rotates and how you can carry with uh, outsmarting your enemies and map control rather than pure mechanics. So the demo starts off with a single kill, nothing too special here, I just camp and get a kill. Um, and based off of this one kill and what happens in the next 5 seconds, what I hear on my headset and what I see on my radar, without my teammates even giving me any information, I am able to tell the exact locations of all 4 enemies, control them where I want them to be, and now I can confidently walk through the smoke on long without using flashbangs, without checking the corner behind me even. And I basically know where everybody is. I sneak into CT and there's an enemy running at me with his knife out. This is the easiest kill of your life. You don't need good mechanics to get this kill. You just need to be smart and be in the right place at the right time. And you can carry rounds alone. So let's see how I did this and how you can integrate this into your game as well. And let's see what happens on the round. So I'm the guy highlighted with green and I start off by flashing middle. This flash here, the, it pushes the enemies back a little towards the long area. Now I get ready to line up my smoke grenade just in case they try to rotate towards short. But they end up smoking middle instead. Now we have two guys looking at the smoke so I don't want to be staring at the smoke for 20 seconds when I already have somebody else doing it. Instead I'd rather go help my teammate in apartments and we can take map control this way. That's just a general good tip. Uh, if you have other things to do, probably staring at the smoke with two guys is not a good idea. And it, this also applies to the enemies as well. They have two guys staring at the smoke, so this guy most likely wants to go into apartments instead and hold something else than the smoke that his teammate is already holding. Also, uh, while I'm jumping up, I can hear the enemy throwing a smoke grenade. So now I know the exact location of this guy and I have a pretty good hunch that there might be another guy as well. And since my teammate is isolated away from apartments, I expect there to be two enemies. That's why I don't want to push into them. I just camp, I get the free kill. That's why I stand still uh, even further, even after getting the kill, because I'm expecting the trade. Well, the trade never arrives and if it did, I would just fight the guy, if I kill him we attack A, if I die there's nothing I can do. Uh, but since he didn't trade, since he left and I decided to leave as well, now I need to start outsmarting the enemies. This is where aiming basically stops and controlling the map begins. The reason is they just lost a guy so they must have an opening somewhere because you basically need five guys to hold down everything properly. You typically need two guys brackets and one guy holding apartments on A side and then you need two guys B. Um, so now that they only have four guys there's, there has to be an opening somewhere and instead of me taking raw aim duels and trying my luck to see if I can beat them, I can just outsmart the enemies, force them to rotate where I want them to and now find the opening in their defense. So in my mind this guy he doesn't necessarily know I dropped down and even if I did I could be coming back up, whatever. In his mind there's two of us in apartments and we can attack him from two directions. He did have the smoke up which is why he wasn't afraid of this earlier but now that his teammate is dead um, and the smoke is about to fade he has to back off. He's very uncomfortable here fighting two different angles and he's going into pit probably. Sometimes people like to go A, sometimes they even like to go short. Pit is probably the most common one. And I know this, I know where he will be in 10 seconds. Uh, I can predict where he will be based on me getting a kill and him not trying to trade me. Now I know where he will be in 10 seconds, alright? Uh, I also know about this guy, he threw a molly. But even if I didn't, it's pretty obvious there's probably three guys A. Uh, they were pushing apartments with two guys, so most likely somebody's holding their back so that they don't get flanked or we don't enter A side. I know there's a guy anyway somewhere around here, even if he didn't throw the Molotov. And on top of this, by simply checking at my radar and listening to what utility my teammates have been throwing, you can even see it in your chat if you have to check or whatever, uh, I know my teammates have very good control of banana area. And this is how I can deduct that they have two guys on B still, because nobody in their rightful mind would leave B when the T's are currently taking car control. You don't just leave your teammate alone, alone when the T's might be executing on B any second now. Later on in the video I'll go over what I would do if we didn't have banana control, but let's stick with this for now. So I basically now know the locations of all four enemies. There has to be two B, my teammates are attacking B as we speak. Uh, I know where this guy is, I know where he will be, and I know there's somebody holding brackets probably. And this Molotov does just, just gives away exact location of the enemy. But theoretically he could be rotating short already. 
uh, all this stuff, you get the idea. Now this is where you start controlling the rotates and outsmarting your opponents with good utility. So the thing is, I know about this guy, I know about his approximate location, but I don't know if he's going pit or short. And again, I know there was somebody on long, he already threw a Molotov, but again, he could be going towards A site already. Uh, he could be still sitting on long. I don't know exactly what he's doing. And these are always dangerous situations when you don't know if the AVP is on short or if he will be on long then you might run into them and they just get a free kill and that's something you need to avoid at solo queue at all times. You cannot die in solo queue or you just leave the run to your teammates. So you need to get like three kills before you're allowed to die. So now I cannot proceed to move further until I know his exact location, until I know where the AVP is and I know I'm safe. So this is what I call forcing a rotate. It's, it's a term I made up but I basically force him to a certain spot regardless of where he originally was. So currently his position is a mystery to me. He could be long, he could be A, he could be coming towards short. But by using the utility, by smoking off long, and then a little bit later by smoking, ah uh, sorry, smoking off long and flashing short, this pushes him back. So if he was on short, he gets blind and typically AVPs like to back off. We're coming with multiple people, we have the apartments control, he could even theoretically get uh, flanked from behind if, if his teammate leaves even the tiniest gap. If he wasn't short, he's being surrounded and he will surely back off now that I flashed him. So if he wasn't short, I'm forcing him on A. And if he was on long, what's happening here is I am isolating his teammate. This smoke uh, gives us the opportunity to attack his teammate with multiple people from two different areas and honestly defending from pit with no smoke. Uh, since this guy used the smoke earlier on, it's gonna be nearly impossible. Uh, so if you place yourself in the shoes of the AVP, uh, of, of course, you don't want to be standing here and staring at the smoke, but even more importantly, you have to go and help your teammate. Your teammate is being overwhelmed by multiple people, you have to leave. And that's exactly what he ends up doing. He runs towards long, he creates this crossfire with his teammate, and now attacking A is very hard for us, because they have really strong positions. But I know this, I force him here. Regardless of whether he was short or long, I force him to A site. And now I know his exact location, even though I didn't know the original location. And I also know since they had 2B, then nobody could be long. And that's how I can just walk through the smoke, not check the corner behind me. A little bit worried about the AVP maybe peeking here, that's why I'm holding this angle. Uh, but overall, I'm quite confident that I can make it in time. And that's how I walk into CT, and there's a guy running at me with his knife out. And this is super useful for you in solo queue. Even if your teammates, mine did end up getting a site, but even if your teammates were campers, they were still sitting middle, they were still sitting apartments doing nothing, this stuff still works. Uh, me using utility to force the AVP back, that has nothing to do with my teammates and that still leaves the opening here. I can still get into CT, I can still cut the rotates, and now me and my teammates, we can start going B instead. So. This is even stronger in solo queue if you have camper teammates. This is how you can carry alone by outsmarting your opponents, by getting multiple kills per round, uh, by getting this crazy map control you shouldn't be able to get. Now I know what some of you must be thinking, but Mahi, you had good teammates who got banana control and that's how you knew they had 2B. What if my teammates are camping towards middle and I don't know if they have an AVP car and the other CT is already rotating uh, to A and now they have 4A and the AVP never rotates away because they have so many people on A and this stuff doesn't work if my teammates are AFK. And we're gonna go over that example next, but before we do just make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of content, I will be posting similar videos in the future. So your question should be uh, when they have somebody controlling banana alone, maybe he's an AVP, maybe he smoked banana off and he's right for bottom banana we don't know there, there's one guy banana that's all we know they have banana control my teammates are camping middle this guy is an unknown factor now he could be a he could be fourth guy a and when you get the first kill in apartments uh if you now smoke off long and you force the avp back going through the long smoke is a suicide there could be another guy he could be in the very corner you didn't check so yeah you guys are right i cannot do what i did if I don't have all the information and now I need to do the second best thing. I need to do what's available to me with the information, with the utility I have. And there are now two unknown factors in this example. Let's let's remove the smoke for now. Let's say he's an AVP, for example. There are two unknown factors. One of them is the AVP. I know he's somewhere around here, he used Molotovs and whatever. He's somewhere around A. That's That can affect the outcome of the round, but it's not the deciding factor necessarily. Whereas this guy, the rotator, if he's B and we attack against two guys B, we might lose the round. 
if he's A and we attack into three guys, again, we might just straight up lose the round. So he's the more uh, major, he's the more deciding unknown factor, basically. I would rather control him and know there are only two guys A and now attack five versus two, not knowing where one of them is, than try and control this guy to A and then actually there's three guys A and I just run into A stack anyways. So right, you need to control whoever is the most deciding unknown factor. And here I want to control the enemy to B. Why B? Because if I control him to A, and then we try to attack B, and there's an AVP at car, he picks one of us, uh, he picks off one of us, and then his teammates still have enough time to rotate to B, because getting to B is a very long way. And yeah, that's just, it's not gonna work. Uh, that's a useless strategy. Instead, I have to control him back to B. Uh, by forcing off the AVP. I need to push back the AVP to B side so that if the other guy already was B, surely he's not going to leave now that his AVP player is being pushed back and we are using, let's say I use a flashbang and then I might even use a smoke grenade to push the AVP back. Surely this guy is not going to leave right now when we're attacking B. Uh, whereas if he was on A and I push the AVP back, I smoke him off, I flash him off, whatever, now the guy, if he was A, he's coming to B. So again, I'm forcing a rotate here. I didn't know if he was B or A, but now I do. By forcing the other player back to B, now I know that if he was B, he still is. If he was A, he's now B. And now we turn around and now we attack A. And yeah, there is still one unknown factor. I know he's somewhere around A. I know there's two of them A, two of them B. But guys, it's five versus two attack. This is still way better than just randomly executing somewhere and hoping for the best and then actually going into a three-man stack. So yeah, you need to do your best with the information and the utility you have available. And forcing a rotate is one of the best methods of starting to win more games in solo queue. Even if your teammates are bad, you are more likely to win five versus two than five versus three. So this is going to take a lot of time to integrate into your own games, it won't probably click immediately. You need to practice a lot, you need to watch a lot of demos, maybe subscribe to my channel and watch my other similar videos in the future, and just slowly digest the information and slowly integrate this uh, more and more into your own games. And eventually, when this clicks, you will be basically unstoppable in solo queue. And yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know if it's something you enjoyed and you'd like to see maybe other maps as well. Leave a comment which map you'd like to see next and make sure to subscribe. It would help me a lot. Uh, good luck with the games, guys, and keep improving.